Let's go to Francis Newton Stacy on this, the Optimal Capital Director of Strategy. Uh, John Hilsenrath as well with us, a Wall Street Journal Global Economics Editor, uh, Fox News contributor, Fox Business contributor, you name it. Um, John, <laughs> this, this idea that, you know, we're running a deficit likely at $2.3 trillion, that's without stimulus, without stimulus. So obviously we'll add significantly to that <clears throat> with stimulus. Um, no one seems worried about it. Uh, maybe down the road they'll be worried about it. What, your thoughts? Well, well, first of all, you know, I'm hoping you guys can tell me where these money boots are and how I can get inside one of them because uh, I, I've just been holed up at home for a long time. You know, um, Neil, you're probably also too young to remember back in the 90s, we had this idea of bond market vigilantes, right? Whenever we got bad deficit numbers out, uh, interest rates would go up, and there was a lot of pressure on Washington to deal with budget deficits, and that's why George H.W. Bush and Bill Clinton did, because the market demanded it. The market doesn't demand it now. And as long as the market doesn't demand it, it's a money booth, and they're going to keep going. What, what I'm watching in this debate right now is what's happening with that minimum wage, because that, is, that tells me something about how much influence the, the left is, is having on policy, because you can have a real debate about whether the minimum wage is counterproductive or helpful to low-income households. You could, you, know, you could argue that when you raise the minimum wage, it gives companies a disincentive to hire. The left is pushing hard for it. And, you know, if that's the way this is going, that tells you that the left is winning these debates. You know, that's an interesting argument, Francis, because you'd almost think as soon as I heard this out of Nancy Pelosi, we're sending that $15 wage thing, uh, you know, to the Senate. Um, I could just imagine Joe Biden saying, really? I mean, do we have to be doing this right now? Uh, what are we looking at within the Democratic Party? Because there's going to be an aggressive back and forth on this. I don't think this will end peacefully. Um, I, I don't think it will disrupt the stimulus, but I don't think it will, will, will not reveal some internal fighting. No, it's absolutely true. The, the, um, the $15 minimum wage is the justification for the inflation being caused uh, by dumping all this stimulus into circulation because prices are going up. I mean, lumber has gone up multiple hundreds of percent. Uh, food costs have gone up uh, at least 12 percent, in some cases up to 40 percent. So what's happening is you're having the bottom of the K-shaped recovery where the people who are not benefiting from the stimulus, not only are they hurting from a loss of employment, but they're hurting from an increase in the cost of living. And so the Band-Aid approach to that is to raise the minimum wage to $15. The problem with that is you do stifle the recovery because this is a bad time to put pressure on balance sheets when you have a lot of companies because of the pandemic on the brink of bankruptcy. You know, guys, uh, we're getting some, you know, details of what the president is, is telling these mayors and, and, and governors. And one of them is that there is, there is a need right now to help states with unemployed people in opening school. Separately, says John, he, a need in COVID, uh, in this COVID rescue plan. Well, to a governor, at least, I don't know about the mayors, but certainly to a governor, they, they want help. They, 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 and, and the more money, the better. And I, I, I suspect that there is this anxiety among Republicans who said, well, you're, you're actually bailing out governors who, you know, had a history of problems in their states and they want to be bailed out from that. I might add that a couple of Republican governors are among those who are requesting some aid, so maybe for different reasons. But my point is, uh, that seems to be a moving target that gets a lot more expensive. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's a couple of things to pull apart here. W one is that w when you look at state and local budgets, there was a lot of fear last year that they were going to, that these budgets were going to collapse because there was so much uh, strain on their resources for unemployment benefits and Medicaid and things like that. And they depended on sales tax revenues, uh, w which were being hit. What happened was they weren't hit as hard as a lot of people expected. Uh, part of that was because they did get a lot of federal aid um, last year. But it wasn't as bad uh, a, a crisis as people expected. Some economists say, well, maybe it's going to happen this year instead of next. So, frankly, I just don't know how deep that strain is right now. In terms of this idea of profligate states and local governments, for a federal lawmaker to make that argument, 
is kind of laughable because state and local governments have to balance their budgets. They have rainy day funds. The federal government is running up trillions and trillions of dollars of debt every year. And for them to be calling out state governments, like I say, it's kind of a joke. All right, guys, I'm going to get you back in just a couple segments, so don't wander too, too far here.